Good morning everybody and welcome to another Blowdown adventure. Okay, so in today's episode, this is an episode that I've been wanting to use for so long, but I've never actually had the time to do it. Today I actually have a little bit of time to do it. So today's episode, I am going to be showing you every single little tip and trick about nice now. I'm going to show you five launch sites. I'm going to see how many different bait types I can get you. And then in the Patreon channel, the link is in the description, you will find all my spots yes for the first time ever i am going to say exactly where i'm fishing i will show you on a map exactly the spot that i'm fishing grunter cop steambras and i'll even show you how where to catch muscle cracker in the estuary yes there is muscle cracker in the estuary as well so if you want all that secret info that i can't share to everybody because what happens is if i share it to everybody as soon as i get to my spot there's 10 people lying on the spot but i'm willing to share that with the patreons um, so in the description go patreon and if you just want to contribute to blowdown if you just want to help out the channel you guys are amazing if you want to get your name on the boat there's also a link for coffee in the description so that gets your name on the boat i'll show you now where um, the name is names are on the boat okay guys so here you can see the names on the boat that's everybody that has uh, donated twenty dollars or more so twenty dollars or more on the coffee grind get your name on the boat okay so now let's start with the first launch site i'm going to be launching my boat a little bit late here but first i'm going to drive around and show you all the launches. i will also include what it cost and where or why we launched there and why don't we launch there okay so this launch site very nice little launch site it's high up in the estuary there you can see the n2 bridge and uh, this is a very nice launch site no launch fees or anything um, and what's nice about this launch site is if you want to launch and you've got younger kids with you or you've got um, someone that's not really capable of launching or, or helping you there's a nice sand sand beach where you can actually just launch the boat and then you can pull the boat off on the sand and it's also nice if you want to launch the upper part of the estuary uh, if you want to fish the upper part of the estuary so if you're looking to fish around about the top part of the estuary then this is a very nice launch site okay but one problem with this launch site is if you are overnighting then do not use this launch site um yes the guys there has been reports of trailer wheels being stolen cars being broken into so this is a nice daytime launch site we can launch during the daytime um, and it's safe and everything but do not leave your trailer here at the at night time so that's one little tip that i can tell you um okay then in the patreon channel i'll show you the fishing spots around this launch site and why we launch here okay so now we're going to go on to launch site number two that's also a hidden little gem um, i've launched there before on a couple of videos but i don't launch there a lot but it's also a little hidden gem where you don't have to pay any launch fees or anything but um let's get going to that one okay guys so now we're approaching launch site number two so it's on your way into nice before you get the robots uh, the traffic lights um there's a little turn off and not a lot of people know about this little launch site um there's no actual slip it's actually just uh, stones so rocks and stones but it is a, a safe launch site um very simple launch site and i've launched the gecko here as well um in a couple of episodes so yeah it's um it's a it's a nice launch site you can easily launch here um especially when you have a little bit of a smaller boat it's a very nice um hidden little gem where you don't have to pay any any fees um and there's even a jetty where you can come and pick up people up so let me quickly show you the the I don't know how I'm going to get out of here again, <laughs> but that's also right. Um, okay, so as you can see here, and this is also a nice launch site when you want to fish the upper estuary part or even the middle part. But yeah, you can see it's all stones, 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 stones. And you can see there's some of these tires that slipped a little bit, but it's stones here, small little rocks, pebbles. And yeah, it's a very nice launch site. So you just put the trailer in there. Okay, so when you launch here, you're actually close to a lot of fishing grounds. Um, that's why we, we launch here sometimes. But yeah, you're right here at Shark Alley. And then also that old Shark Alley part is a good part to fish for cob. 
and if you go around the corner a little bit so that area there is all good cop fishing in the channel uh, and then right around the corner you start fishing more for grunters a lot of raggies in this um one you'll remember the episode where we had the youngsters on the boat where we caught those raggies we caught those raggies in in this area over there in that in that gully okay so let's move on that's number two uh, so let's move on to number three now we're getting to the paid ones and this is the ones that we more more use more often um, just because it's a little bit safer when we're night fishing you can leave your car there with um, ease this is also a spot where I'm not very comfortable leaving my car here it's a little bit hidden in the bushes so we haven't had any trouble here but um, it's also a little bit unsafe to leave your car here okay guys so now we are at the nice now angling and diving association um so yeah they've got a beautiful clubhouse it's right opposite the feather beds <clears throat> feather beds uh, the company with the john ben and all the boats that uh, to take you over on excursions and stuff so what i like about this side is yes it is a pay side i think it is around about 100 or 130 rand it was always was 100 rand but i think they push it up to 130 rand they've got beautiful facilities that you, you can use this is a spot that we we use um when we are fishing this is the spot they've got cctv cameras so your vehicle is safe here if you want to and they normally have security guards here as well so if you want to launch um <clears throat> and fish for the night this is definitely your safest option and it's nice in the middle so you have um yeah you've you've got peace of mind when you leave your car here that uh, nothing will happen to your stuff and it is actually a beautiful launch site as well so and this is another spot where you can catch your chumis. Um, so yeah, right there, off that jetty right there. You can stand there. I'll show you now. There's black marks on that jetty where you can actually catch your chumis. So that's um, another little secret. Okay, so as you can see, beautiful launch site. Uh, very easy slip. More than enough parking for everybody who wants to park here. Um, yeah, so this is the site that we use most of the time. Um, doesn't really matter um, if it's high tide or low tide because uh, of these walls that that they built here these walls the current also doesn't really affect you so if you're a new angler and you're struggling to get the boat or a new boat owner and you're struggling to get your boat on a trailer the wind is a, a strong current and a strong wind it's, but sometimes it becomes very difficult to actually get the boat straight onto the trailer um, as you're coming in uh, normally that will push your your your, um, your stern over so yeah this is actually a very nice site nice protected with the two walls and yeah. so that's that's my preferred launch site where we, we launch I pay the boating fees um, and if the if you come during after hours please do go and pay the, the launch fees when you come out and just go and and because there's normally a chain up during the day but if you come before a certain time or after a certain time the chain is down so make sure that you arrange with them and then pay the, pay the boat fees make sure that you have your nice now or not your nice now your garden route um, boat license they are very very strict sandbox is doing an amazing job to make sure that everybody has their licenses it's this year it's a pink sticker and they check if you've got your pink sticker on if you don't have your pink sticker on you're off the water to make sure that you stop at either at ebb and flow you can get it at ebb and flow in wilderness or you can get it here at sun parks that's another spot where you can actually get your your boat license for nice now or the or the garden route anywhere in the garden route that you want to go on a onto the water like island lake or, or any of those spots you need to have your pink sticker on your boat um, they work the fees out according to your motor size and uh, then you pay the fee okay so now i'm going to take you to the last spot that i can show you the other one i'll show you by boat because that one is totally on the uh, way 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 over on the other side of the estuary at brenton on lake um, but i'm going to show you the last one now so this one sorry this one is if you want to fish you're nice in the middle of everywhere um, so you can go upper estuary or you can go down estuary but uh, this is a very sp nice spot in the middle of everywhere the spot that i'm going to show you now we will launch here at leisure isle is more if you want to go over to the beach bar or if you just want to have some fun with a, with a family if you want to go through the water streets i'll show you that too as well um these an island the water street beautiful i love taking the family here um so okay let's get to the fourth spot Okay guys, so the last spot that I'm going to show you is 
the launch site at Leisure Isle. So it's actually on your way out, on your way to Plitt, um, out of Nisner, you take that turn off that says Leisure Isle and you drive down this little path and then you turn right onto the bridge and you drive over this little path and you just follow that path all the way to the end. Um, yeah, so it's a beautiful launch site. Number one, they've got beautiful facilities. It's also 100 Rand for the launch, but it's worth the money. If you want to come and spend the day with the family, if you want to go and drive through uh, these and Isle through the through the um, water streets, it's a it's a beautiful launch site. Cars are safe here. Um, you can always launch here. The water is deep enough. It's not a, a launch where you're restricted by high tide or low tide. So yeah, I love launching here when I'm bringing the kids and we want to go over to the Feather Beds Beach Bar and have a cocktail there and just fool around and play around. Even if we're going out to the heads if you want to go for hike or if you want to um, go to Douglas that's one of the spots that there's actually yellowtail out here nice it's the only spot that, that regularly um, has yellowtail on them so here yeah, you can see I've turned right and I'm on this little path now towards Leisure Isle and uh, I'll show you now when we get to the launch site it's a stunning launch site I love the launching here so here you can see they are actually called the Leisure Isle Boat Club. So there's the logo, the Leisure Isle Boat Club. And um, yeah, so you just park your trailer outside after you've launched your boat. It is very safe. I've never had any trouble here. Um, yeah, so there's actually, it's a beautiful <laughs> little onsite, as I've said before. Um, there's a perfect spot where you can pick up your crew and they've got moorings and they've even got trailer parks. So you can see that the guys that um, want to park their boat for the year, you can. Um, become a club member and then I'm not 100% sure what the fees are for that but um, yeah then you can leave your boat there and when you come back so if you're looking for something like that or if you're looking for a boat mooring I don't think they'll have boat moorings because it's very popular as you can see all the boats here in the moorings um, yeah so but um, I, yeah, this is my favorite launch site if I just want to come and play with the kids or take the family over we normally do that on my birthday 24th of December we normally go and everybody has a, a cocktail and something to eat at the at the beach bar. So yeah, there you can see all the boats that's in the moorings covered up, and there's the slip. So it's a beautiful slip. It's a very very nice slip, uh, very safe. And also you can see the walls on the side, um, so there's no current that's that's gonna mess you around. And they've actually on busy season December, they've got a lane in the middle, so two boats can launch, launch at a time. And not a lot of people actually launch. I've never come here that it's so busy that I have to wait and launch. So it's normally very quiet and for hundred bucks, easy to launch here. Um, so then you just follow after you've launched, you just follow the marker buoys to the main channel and you go all the way around but i'll show that to you when i come when i put the boat in i might put the boat in i haven't decided where i'm going to put the boat in so there you can see um, you just come down and you can pick up your crew here so that's very nice very nice launch site this okay so now i have to decide where am i going to put my boat in to show you all the different fishing spots um so yeah i'll see maybe i'll put in at the angling club um, that's a little bit more central in the middle um, yeah okay okay guys so I've showed you all the um, launch sites now so now I'm going to show you one of the boat shops and this one is packed with everything that you need so I'm here at Tate Marine and um, as you can see everything that you need to have fun and skis they've got all your anchor ropes they've got all your anchors they've got your change they've got everything stocked in here so if you're anything in the area and you need something desperately uh, from boat shop give them a call tight marine their description is uh, in the description the num number will be there and i'll even put a link into their map on on how to get here but they service motors they build rebuilds they do everything that you can imagine with boats so give these guys a tight marine a shot um yeah they really do oh look at these speakers what? so they've got everything that you need here at tight marine so yeah Okay, also here at Tate Marine, if you're looking for a boat, haha, <laughs> yes, they have boats. They've got second-hand boats, they've got new boats, they've got the Fusions, um, beautiful boats. So here's all their second-hand boats that you can buy. And they've got plenty, plenty, plenty. They've got inflatables, they've got speed boats if you just want to cruise around. They've got deep-sea boats, 
they've got estuary boats they've got everything that you need right here okay so now we're gonna get in the water okay guys so i've decided to pay the 100 bucks here at the boat club the angling club angling and diving club to be exactly so there the gecko is already in the water so now i'm a little bit alone um if you just phoned me and he's actually nice as well today so um, i'm a little bit on my own so i it's a little bit of a struggle but not that much i've launched a boat alone before so um yeah i'm quickly gonna get the boat in and then um i'll show you all the fishing spots all the secret spots and where to get bait and how to get bait so that's going to be the next part of this adventure Okay, so I've just launched the boat there and here you can see uh, one of the featherbeds boats are on their way there's the John Ben and it's a beautiful day in Naisna I absolutely love Naisna guys oh I think this is my favorite place in the world oh, I love Naisna it's just so much to do even if you don't fish the daytime fishing in Naisna is not that great I must say um, nighttime fishing is a lot better so if you do decide to come and fish here follow the guide um, nighttime fishing is definitely better but early mornings late afternoons and then uh, especially during December holidays when most of you want to start fishing here um, yeah it's it's actually better nighttime fishing and then I'll explain a little bit later but okay let's explain it now so when you're fishing a spring tide you can go a lot higher up the estuary um, because the salt water goes up a lot higher when you're fishing uh, a neap tide then a little bit closer to the not close to the mouth because I never fish close to the mouth my spots basically start uh, after the train beach there's one spot in front of the train beach but I'll show you but my spots basically starts after the, the train beach so yeah um, oh, just love being on the water out here so I'm first going to head down and I'm going to show you the Aspie channel how to get out of the Aspie channel and then I'll show you the bloodworm banks and I'll show you the sandworm banks and I'll show you how to get moonshine worm and I'll show you how to get pencil bait, how the holes look for pencil bait. I'll also show you how, I've never done this on the channel before, but I'll show you how a sandworm um, hole, how, how the sandworm hole looks. Okay. So as we're going past the um, waterfront, there's actually a yacht club as well. There is a little slip there. I don't know exactly how it works if you want to launch there, but I know there is a little slip that you are allowed to launch there. Um, there's, there, there you can see there's a slip. But I don't know if it's for members only or how it works. But um, yeah, there is a slip. But this is the oldest yacht club in South Africa. So that's pretty interesting. That, and it's on a beautiful location. I know I say beautiful a lot in this, on this channel. But that is on a spectacular location. Um, with all the yachts lying around here. The houseboats lying around here. That's also an episode that we should maybe do. Is rent one of those houseboats and go for a weekend of fishing on one of the houseboats that that can be an interesting episode then we can fish night fishing yeah maybe i must do that okay so now i'm here at the leisure owl boat club so way over there you can see the the launch there's a boat that's about to put in and all that you do is when you come in there you go straight these poles that shows you exactly where to go so you go straight there and then you can find all these marker buoys so there's a marker buoy over there one there and then you just follow the curve it goes like in a curve around so you just follow that curve um, if you want to get into the main channel so this is called the Aspie channel they're actually a very good fishing spot during winter months if you want to catch uh, steam uh, when the water is nice and cold you can catch steam here so that's not a bad idea if you if you want to catch a couple of steamies during winter months so yeah it's actually not a bad spot if you um, if you come and lie here just find yourself a nice little spot where there's a nice little drop off um, and um, yeah, you'll be able to find steamers. Okay, so best bait for steamers during the winter months is sandworm. You can catch them on pink prawn. Pink prawn is a little bit of, uh, difficult to get in Naisna. It's not a lot of pink prawn around in Naisna. So that's one of the main target species during the winter months is definitely your white steamers. And they get big here, guys. Those double digits, those 10, 11, 12, 13 kilogram um, steamers that you find here in this area. So yeah, if you want to come and catch White Simras, launch over there and then just come around the corner I'll show you now where your bloodworms and everything is uh, that's our next stop is mullets where we find our mullets where we find our bloodworm where we find our sandworm so that's going to be the next spot so this spot here in front of me is a very nice spot for a lot of bait so you find sandworm you can find sandworm you can find bloodworm and as well mullets so I'm right here on the edge of Leisure Isle so right there 
on that little edge it goes from shallow 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 and then there's a little drop off and that's a very good spot to find your mullet your live bait harders normally they're quite big there but you do get uh, shoals of smaller ones and then you can see here in front of me the tide's still going out there's a little bank that's opening up that's your sand bank for bloodworm and um, sandworm that you find there and then way over there there's people walking there you can park your car there and then you can climb off that's also a very good spot for bloodworm along that side and on low tide there's a bank that you can actually go through just be careful there is boards up there there is a protected area as well uh, that you're not allowed to pump bloodworms in so there's a spillover effect that's why this bank is so good there's a little bit of a spillover effect from the protected area where you're not allowed not allowed to pump so next up we're going to show you the head and the beach bar so the beach bar is one of my favorite places like i've said i always go there for my birthday if the weather is fine and good enough we always go there i launch the boat here at the leisure isle boat club and then i do two or three trips and i take everybody over and we have a cocktail there the calamari and the fish and chips is really really good so um, that's a great idea if you want to spend if you've got a boat you want to spend some time with the family take them out uh, go take them to the the beach bar the really nice thing now we are here in the heads, the Nisna heads. This is the mouth where you exit into the ocean. <clears throat> and uh, it's, uh, you can see the swell, there's a little bit more swell. But the heads is actually nice and flat today, but there's, it's quite misty. So, um, okay, so now that I've showed you the heads, let's continue to the beach bar, my favorite place. And there is the beautiful beach bar. Obviously, it's a little bit quiet, it's a weekday today. So, but there's a group of tourists getting off one of their boats. And um, yeah, so there's the whole beach bar. The kids can play here in front in the sand. And how it normally works is you drop your people, you drop your crew off that you want to at the deck. And then uh, they've got a dinghy that drives around. Or if it's quiet, you can moor right there with your, with, your, with your boat. You can moor it right there. You can tie it down. But normally what we do during December is when it's really busy is you drop your crew off and you anchor just a little bit outside and they'll come and fetch you with your, the, the little rubber duck. So yeah. I love the beach bar. It's absolutely amazing. I'll see on the website this maybe got a couple of photos um, how it looks inside and uh, everything the menu is speaking. <laughs> This is the last launch site that I spoke about, launch site number five, but this is not very accessible. So before you drive um, over the bridge into Nisla, you turn left. Uh, if you're coming from George side, you turn left and then you go under the bridge and you drive all the way to Brain Brenton on Lake. So there's Brenton on Lake. Over there, that's Brenton on Lake. <clears throat> and there's a little slip right there. There's a little slip. But the problem with the slip is actually that you need a lot of water so you can't launch here when I'd say most probably only two hours after or before high tide you can launch there otherwise there's not enough water on the slip so it's a little bit of a tricky launch you can launch it's a very nice launch um, it's always space for your bucky because there's nobody that actually launches there so and it's close to the feather bed um, close to everything down if you want to fish down river but make sure that you have your timing right otherwise you won't be able to get your boat out that happened with me when i still had my rubber duck um, i launched there and then it didn't have enough water but then i just continued fishing until there was enough water so that was also fine um, okay so that's the last launch that i wanted to show you guys okay so now I'm going to show you, this is one of my little secret bait spots, so I don't want to show the exact location. If you're on the Patreon channel, you'll know exactly where this location is. I'm showing it there. But otherwise, I'm going to show you how to get big mud prawns. I'll show you how the hole for a uh, pencil bait looks and also how the hole for the moonshine worm. So if you're looking for mud prawns, obviously you're looking for some nice deep mud. So here you can see big mud prawns holes. So I'm quickly going to pump and see if I can find a couple. But it's fairly simple you just take your pump on one of those big holes give it one or two sucks um, don't try and pump the sand out just try and suck the water out it's very important that you that you only suck the water out and then uh, hopefully i can show you a big prawn
there's one so there you can see a nice big mud prawn beautiful okay but i'm only showing by today i'm not taking any so i'm gonna put that one back into his hole okay let me see if i can find uh the other holes that i talked about okay so there's a little moonshine worm hole and you can see it's got like a kind of a tube in it so um yeah i've actually explained this on a couple of videos you take a thin piece of wire and you bend the end in an L shape or in a U shape you can decide whatever works better for you and then you stick it down the hole quickly and you as you're pulling it up you're turning 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 and then you'll hook the worm and you'll pull him out sometimes the whole house comes out but uh, sometimes you do get only the worm so a very very good bait for uh, stiembras and grunter excellent bait for stiembras and grunters Okay, here we've got the perfect example of how a pencil bait hole looks. There's a pencil bait hole. So it looks almost looks like a keyhole. And this one looks a little bit different, almost the same as the, the one for the moonshine worm. All you do here is you have a thicker wire, piece of um, yeah, thicker cable or something, but thicker wire and uh, bent with an L at the bottom. Stick it down, twist it, and then you pull it up and you'll feel how you hook it. Okay, so that's the bait on this bank. And now I am here on the bank opposite of Leisure Isle. Okay, this is the spot where you can find moonshine worm, blood worm, sand worm. Um, that's, this is the spot where I normally come for that. I've made a lot of videos actually of how to pump blood worm. I've never showed how a sand worm's hole look. So I'm, in this episode I'm going to show you how the sand worm's hole look. And then also I'll show you again how a blood worm looks. I've already showed you the moonshine worm and the pencil bait and the prawn. Okay, so there's a perfect example. That's what you're looking for. Almost looks like a bird um, made a poo poo there. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. And then the, you need to have a little bit of water over it. Because what you're going to do is you're going to pump five, six times hard down into the sand. Five, six pumps straight down. And then from there, you're going to put your hand in the hole. Make like a washing machine. You're going to start working it, working it, working it. And make the hole bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And as soon as you have the hole in nice size, you'll start feeling it. Almost feels like a, a, a tree root that you've got in your hand. Don't pull on it. Work it. Keep working. Keep working until it's out completely. Because then you'll actually um, will be able to take it out. It's, it's very fragile. As soon as you tuck on it, it starts breaking. Sandworm in the winter is a brilliant bait for... Grunter will take it occasionally, but it's a brilliant bait for white steam brass, especially those bigger ones. So that's that, and I'm quickly going to search and see if I can find a blood worm hole. Okay guys, so what you're looking for is a little indent in the sand. Like that one, there's a little indent. And then you're looking for a dead giveaway is that grey sand. So there's this blow hole. So you're going to pump in that hole, and as soon as you hear it sound like... Then you know you're on the right spot, then you can stick your hand in there, five, six pumps down. And you should be on the money. We want 10 of those. Preferably smaller ones than that. Here we go. You hear that sound? And there it is. There's another one. Nice, well done. So yeah, that's the blood worms. Like I said, I showed many videos of how to do that. And I'll show the map, the location of where you can find all these baits again. There's the map again. Okay, so I've showed you the map again on what, where to get your bait. So now we've showed you all the launch sites. I've showed you all the bait that you need to get. So now let's show you a couple of fishing spots. Okay guys, so I'm going to switch over to Google Maps now because I just want to show you exactly where I lie. So on the Patreon channel, I'll show you exact spots for what fish. Um, but on the main channel, I'll just show you the general area of where I'm fishing. So that you have an idea, you need to figure out a little bit, and I can't show you exactly everything um, on, the, on the channel. So you have to figure out a little bit on your own how to fish and where to fish. But if you're keen, invite me on your boat and I can show you a little bit more tips and tricks on how to get those baits exactly. But if you follow this guide, you should be 
90% there. The fish still has to bite. But um, yeah, so I'm going to switch over to Google Maps and explain a little bit more on what actually exactly where to fish. Okay, guys, so I've got the map of Nisna here in front of me. So I'm going to show you exactly where I'm going to launch now. So if you're coming in from uh, George side, you're going to go all the way through there into on your way out of Nisna, you just turn off to Leisure Isle. So this is where we're going to start our journey today. Um, or you're coming from plate side, coming in from plate side just before you start going into Nisna, there's a turn off Leisure Isle. And uh, that's where we're going to launch. Let's quickly show you on this map how to get to all the different launch sites. So I'll start from the bottom. You've got the Leisure Isle one. To get to the Brenton on Lake one, you take the left turn off before you enter Nisna. Take the left turn off. You go under the bridge and you come all the way around here um, to Brenton and you take the turn off. And there's a little slip over there. Over there is the slip there. That's the one slip. Then you've got your feather beds one that I've showed you. That's one is over there in the middle of town. There on this little edge is that one, the sneaky little one with all the pebbles. And then the first one highest up is way over there at the old Crabs Creek. But same same turn off as you take to the Brenton one. Just take that little turn off there um, towards as you're coming in and you turn left under the bridge and then it's a the little slip. Okay. But in this instance, we're going to say that you launched at Leisure Isle. <clears throat> so when you launch at Leisure Isle, I've already showed you this, you follow the main channel. But this main channel, is you go straight out from the launch site, you go straight out. And you follow all this way around. Okay, so this area during winter months is very good fishing for grunter and steenbrass. And especially on an outgoing tide, because the fish came into this channel, they started feeding on this in these channels here. So in the shallow waters, so on their way out. Um, and sometimes the fish what likes to come lower down in the estuary because it's low tide, so the salt water all comes back. And so this is all good fishing area. You'll see there's a little pole there. And uh, on the outgoing tide, find yourself a nice little spot. Most of the fish that are, most of the spots that I fish, I look for a little bit of a narrow area in the estuary so that you can cast some lines on the banks, on the drop off, and maybe one or two lines in the middle, in the main channel, because you never know where the fish are actually going to feed. So I'll show you now uh, when we get closer to the, to the main areas where I fish um, exactly why I lie on certain spots okay it's also very important that we talk about water temperature so sometimes when the ocean's temperature drops a lot you'll see that the fish goes a little bit higher up the estuary where the water temperature stayed a little bit uh, more the same that it was the previous couple of days so if there's a sudden spike or sudden drop in temperature um, normally the fish will come into the estuary to come and hide okay so from here on in here's the feather beds that I showed you that beach bar that I showed you. Okay, so this area, this whole area here is very good for mullet to get your live bait. So if you jump a little bit here, um, and then also on, try and go, uh, if you want to cast your net and, and jump for them, try and go when the tide is just turning so that your chum doesn't float away. So either low tide or high tide on just before or just as it um, as it's static, because then the, the, the current isn't that strong. And you can actually keep your um, your chum a little bit closer to you and won't drift away that fast. Okay, so that's your main area to get your mullets is this area here. And then this is the banks that I spoke about. And I showed you for your bloodworm, your sandworm, and your pencil bait. This is all very good area for that. Um, this is the no-go area over here. That's the reserve. You can't, um, you can't pump any bloodworms or any bait over there. Okay, so from here... You go all the way up just before the train bridge. There's two spots here. The one spot is on the left hand side. <clears throat> this whole area here is very good fishing for grunter and steambrust. That's a very good area. This side of the bridge and the other side of the bridge in that little channel there. There's fish coming from this side or there's fish going into that channel. There's fish coming from that channel. So there's two channels that meet here. So that's a very good, yeah, the fish kind of gets separated. Some of the fish will go into this channel and some of the fish will go into the other side. On the other side of that little channel, there you can see that channel. So on just on the other side of that bank, on low tide, you'll be able to see that bank. Uh, it's very, very tricky to get in there. So you'll probably have to go around. So just on the up, other side of that, on, on this side, very good area. This whole area is a very good area to fish for Garrick. 
So yeah, that's um, something that I haven't done in in a while. Maybe I must do a video on that. But I have done videos on that where I fish for Garrigan Island Lake. So if you want to know how to hook up your live bait for that, go check out the video of um, the Island Lake Garrick that we caught. Okay, so that's going to be your main target area for Garrick in that in that area. Okay, so anywhere from there, this whole area becomes Granta area. This whole area, yeah, is Granta area. Okay, you can also pump um, this sand prawn on that bank, little little bank there, and there's mud prawn on low tide. You'll find a lot of mud prawns here. You'll see people pumping here, so that's a good spot to pump for mud prawn. Um, but what you're looking for when you're fishing, and this counts for all estuaries, not only for nice now. You're looking for a little spot to ambush the fish, so you're looking for little narrow ch channels in the in the estuary where the fish has to come through so there's a narrow little channel so all the fish that comes through from the main channel in this one or from this side has to go through there or if you're coming from this side the fish will split up a little bit they'll go some will go here some will go there but if you're there all the fish that goes around that corner will will come, have to come through that little narrow channel so that's always stuff that i look for another little nice spot that, that i see on google maps here is all this spots here this whole area look for a narrow little place where you can cast the rod on a on a bank on high tide and then on a bank that side and in the main channel so you can see there's a channel there there's a channel there so that will also be a good spot to fish in that channel if you lie there in the middle or you pick one side cast a little bit of one or two rods on the side there one or two rods there and one or two rods in the middle we normally fish with six rods when you're going for grunters there's a lot of hard work if you're fishing with prawns uh, because you have to check your bait every five minutes but um yeah this whole area over here very good grunter fishing all the way here um you do catch grunters in in this area as well but this is more your live bait choka uh, by um for for cop so this area over here is my main area that we fish for cop you can see there you'll see when you drive on your fish finder there's a deep channel that runs all the way around here so this is a very good spot for cop all the way around okay so now you know all the different fishing spots of where to fish and what fish to find how to get your bait where to get your bait and where to launch your boat okay so then now you understand a little bit better when i said i launched my boat over here because i want to fish for cop in the upper area or i launched my boat over there um, on that little pebbles that I showed you because I want to fish this area for granted so if you want to go during the daytime that's a very nice launch site but like I said this is nice and central you can fish this part you can fish the train bridge you can fish everywhere when you launch over here at the nice nap boat and diving club if I remember correctly that's the name okay so I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, part where I showed you on the map of what areas to fish and where to get your bait okay so one very important thing about nice when you're fishing nice now is the buoys the buoys show the channel so these little red and white marker buoys follow those buoys if you're uncertain of where the banks are um, use your phones google maps you can clearly see the banks on there and as well follow the buoys so a handy tip what i did when i started fishing nice now uh, if you're going to fish nice now in the night you get you don't know where the banks are you can't see properly go in day daytime start way at the top past the the n2 bridge start way at the top and on your gps draw yourself a line track your line for all through all the buoys up until the heads then you know exactly where the banks are where the channel is uh, as you can see in my gps i have got plenty of lines everywhere that i go so yeah that's that's my map of nice and you can see i've been here plenty of times so i just follow my gps at night time um, i still drive a little bit slower because just for in case i miss a bank but um yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i hope somebody found helpful about all the tips and tricks on how to launch where to launch uh, what bait to get how to get the bait where to get the bait and where to fish see you guys in the next episode